in the last build video for this Land Cruiser, I mentioned that I've installed snorkels and snorkel pre-cleaners in two other vehicles last year, and I had huge results on keeping the intake clean. And this is the first time I've done an actual test in the shop. We're hooked up to a shop vac. I don't know what the CFM is, unfortunately, so we can't guarantee that we're even in the efficiency range of this pre-filter. But as you can see, there's huge results. It's spinning the air as it draws into the pre-cleaner and it is taking the heaviest parts of that spun air and it's ejecting it out of the side so it doesn't go down into your air box. This is thus confirming that what I've been seeing on these two vehicles is absolutely being provided by the pre-cleaner. Unfortunately, I also tested our $20 eBay variant and it is not giving us the same results the the first version that you just saw runs about 200 bucks and this version uh, that you're watching right now is about 20 bucks and clearly there is a difference the, i would have thought that we would get some benefit out of the 20 dollar pre-cleaner um, but i'm confirming right now i mean you can see there is nothing being ejected out of the sides of this pre-cleaner. The dirt and dust and even rainwater is supposed to come out of these reliefs, but it's literally just circling around in there. And on one side, it's got like a flat dam, but it's at like a 90 degree angle. So the stuff's just kind of like barely coming out. And I'm wondering if I just took a Dremel and I just cut it at like 45, if it would give it a ramp to eject some of this dirt. I quickly discovered what the problem was and it's just a design flaw. This is not designed as well as the expensive variant. It's not sucking in air only from the bottom of this pre-filter, it's sucking it in from everywhere because it's a vacuum. So it's sucking it in from these reliefs as well. In the more expensive version, there's like, I guess we call it like a rotor or something that's spinning around on the inside as the air is sucking through it. And I think that that's physically pushing out the particles. Whereas this one is literally sucking in through the bottom of the pre-filter, it's sucking in through the reliefs. So even with the ramp, it's not letting any of the dust come out. And it's basically just a complete waste of money. You could just get away with using a regular snorkel topper and have the exact same benefit as you would get by using one of these inexpensive versions. Snow and ice have a way of taking the glamour out of travel. Fortunately, there's the Lexus LX450. The elegance and quality of a Lexus. The traction and ground clearance of four-wheel drive. Test drive the LX450 no matter how. You have to get there. Taking little breaks in my projects are extremely important because I get a chance to step back and look at the work that I've done so far and just being able to unplug from it and then replug in with a fresh pair of eyes and fresh perspective is so incredibly valuable. And last weekend I was camping with some friends up in Canada and it gave me a chance to not think about this project at all. And then when I came back, it was very obvious what I wanted to do. There were some things that I don't like about the look of this front bumper, and it's just simply the placement of where I had to put stuff. And I realized that with doing some body modifications to these fenders, I can get a reveal that's gonna be much more aesthetically pleasing and give me the room I need to make the bumper that I see in my head. that I saw in my mind this weekend that I thought looked really nice would be lobbing off these front two turn signals on the Lexus. And what's funny is whenever I got back, I had a DM from somebody who suggested just that. They had done something like that on their Land Cruiser. The, and I really liked the look. The only exception is it looked a little bit too modified for me, if that makes sense. What I wanted is I wanted to have almost a stock-like reveal. And so what I decided to do is basically connect the fender to the top of this valance, like weld it together, and then build some sort of a reveal with my shrinker stretcher that's gonna go from the very front of this fender all the way to the rear.
unfortunately, to mimic a factory body line is it's super time consuming. I mean, it's not like a consistent radius that we're trying to mimic here. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing like a consistent shrink with the shrinker. And then once I can place it on the vehicle, I can use Sharpie to just make notations of spots that might need to get stretched out just a hair because I went a little bit too aggressive. And then other spots where I need to pick it up and I need to shrink at an even tighter radius in order to meet this factory body line. This build is all about elbow grease. And 20 minutes ago, this was just a cheap, flat piece of tin that we then cut. We used a metal break to bend, and then we used the shrinker stretcher to meet that factory body line. And now we're gonna have a one-of-a-kind Land Cruiser for lots of sweat equity, but not a lot of money. I mean, we're talking about like a buck worth of steel in order to get a reveal like this. So I think that it's definitely worth the time. And I'm hoping that when we have a finished result, it looks very clean and almost factory. Very curious on your thoughts here. I've never seen it done this way. It's just something that I thought up this weekend. <sighs> Traditionally, in the off-road world, you'd use like half inch or three-eighths rod and you would slowly heat it and contort around these curves and then do exactly what I'm doing here, just a whole bunch of tack welds because it's so easy to warp um, or st thin steel like this. But then I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, it's gonna be more rigid if I have like a one inch flange on the bottom and if we clean it up just right, it could look pretty factory. So this is complete trial and error. I, I don't know what this is gonna end up like, but so far we've only got like, I don't know, 16 or 18 inches of backing and this is so rigid for how thin it is. And it's because of the way it's designed. We have that vertical structure to help keep it from wiggling around. And as we build this out, it's gonna just get better and better. But the downside is sweat equity. This is a cheap way to do it for sure, but it is a lot of elbow grease. And I've got a ton of work ahead of me today if I wanna get a layer of fiberglass body filler on all this by the time I go to bed. This is dusty, dirty, nasty work. And I honestly, I do love body work, but it's one of those things that I just take in small doses. And before I did YouTube, I would do this over weeks whenever I was working um, on the body of a vehicle, just because there's no reason to like drive yourself crazy with all of the tedious tasks involved in trying to smooth things out over and over and over. And every week that I come out here and I start working, I think that by the end of this week, I'm gonna finally have this Land Cruiser painted, but after a few days of body work, I decide to switch gears and go back to doing stuff that I like. And that's what you're about to see here. So I've gotten everything to a certain point uh, to where I could throw a fat coat of high build primer on it. And then we gotta get ready for some very important company that's gonna show up and help on the project.
this is getting so close to being ready for real primer but i've got dave and ian showing up tomorrow and i wanted to paint this with them there's just no way i'll be ready so we're gonna throw some high build primer over everything so i can see any other little discrepancies that i need to you know add filler or sand down a little more super close but it's all good i'm gonna throw some of this primer on we're gonna let it cure overnight and then uh, tomorrow, I think we're going to get started on that front bumper now that we've established this new body line. Ask you questions, Dave Chappelle. All right. All right, Senor Chappelle. I'm new here. I'm sorry. I am the stand-in. Here we go. All right, Dave. So let's start with uh, who you are and where are we? And you can look like right down the middle or right into that one right there. To be completely honest, I really don't like having people over at my place. This is not just a place of business for me, but this is where my wife and kids live, you know? So it's a very personal, private place. But this was a rare exception. I I had Ian and Dave come over so we could shoot some stuff for Onyx, and uh, it was a real treat having them over. Ian has been a mentor of mine, and uh, I always like watching him work because this is a guy who absolutely clearly loves what he does so make sure you check out that content because we had a real fun time catching up and putting just a couple different parts on the cruiser and talking about our build plan this video is gonna be a weird one i've never had to stop in the middle of the video so a film crew could come film me in my shop but if you want to see any of that footage of the stuff that we did make sure you go over to onyx's youtube page and dave from the dirthead shed just shot his first video so if you want to check that out go to the dirthead shed on youtube now, the situation report. As you can see, I got started on putting the bumper together now that we have this new body line to play with. And I am so happy that I took all that time and did all that work because this is looking super clean now. And I was able to raise that bar up where originally there was a, a turn signal. And I think that this is just, it's a lot better looking body line to work with. And what do you think? Does this look semi-factory? That was the goal is to try to make like this stuff look some of factory. Now, I got these 80s Land Cruiser, uh, 80 series Land Cruiser headlights, thinking they're the same as the Lexus headlight. These are the absolute cheapest headlights I could find. The OEM ones are just way too much money. But I found out that the Lexus headlight is different than the 80 series Land Cruiser headlight. Because right now, I just, I slapped in the headlights, I put the grill on, because I want to have all that in there while I finish up the bumper so I can really see how all the lines look and, you know, make sure I'm not like putting a bar right in front of our headlight or any of that other kind of stuff. Unfortunately, this grill does not fit. I don't want to send the headlights back because I don't want to wait on new ones. I don't want to buy a uh, expensive Land Cruiser 80 series grill. Plus I kind of, I think it's dope that this is a Lexus and not a Land Cruiser. So we're gonna have to modify this thing. Many of you are aware, I don't mind doing a little bit of plasti welding. I didn't have that like budgeted for time, but we got to make this right. I want to make sure that this thing looks really nice. So what I think I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start trimming things to fit. And if we can get this to work with these headlights, then I'm going to take the time. I'm going to cut the bottom section off of this. And Ian Johnson had a great recommendation. He's like, you know, since you know how to plasti weld, maybe you could cut the bottom section and move it up to give it a really nice reveal. This did not work the way that I wanted it to, unfortunately. And I do think that if I put like a day or two of just working on this grill and like cutting and resizing and plasti welding, I could make something work, but it is, it is a whole bunch of time that I do not have in the schedule at all. So after doing some trimming and then heating up some plastic and trying to like mold it around the shape of these headlights, I realized that this just isn't gonna work. What I need to do to make best use of my time is just to find a cheap like repop eBay grill that I think looks nice and it's gonna work with these headlights so that I can spend you know two minutes just bolting in a grill instead of two days trying to reinvent the wheel. When I was visualizing this front bumper in my mind, I could see two really sharp looking lights. And so I decided to use these backlit lights from Rigid. And this is a friendly reminder, those of you that are elite members, you get 20% off all Rigid lighting.
it sucks when you're really picky, but you're also under a deadline. I looked at the weather forecast, and the next week is going to be absolutely perfect for painting. So I basically have to, like, cobble this thing together. I want it to look like a rock crawler, not like an overlander, and I think we've accomplished that with all this tube work. And now it's time to finally finish this paint job. All of my cumulative experience with paint and body up to this point has been just panel repair. I used to buy vehicles with the specific intent of flipping them, or I would even trade. At one time, I got a free guitar for my landlord, and then I traded it for a Volkswagen van, and then I did panel repair on it, and then I flipped it for a bunch of money, and that's something that I used to do on the side. But this is gonna be the first time that I've like painted an entire car all in one shot. And one thing that I know for sure is there's a ton of prep. Um, Cause that's, that's the same rule whenever you're doing panel repair. So we're gonna strip everything down. We're going to, uh, we're gonna do a whole bunch of wet sanding to get this thing scratched out to like a 400 grit sandpaper. And what I like about wet sanding is that you don't really have to wear a mask if you're using plenty of water. Um, but what I don't like is it makes this weird painty paste go all over your shop floor. <laughs> so it'll be worth it though because it's going to be a nice smooth finish. And even though our bodywork isn't quite ready and it's not perfect, this is going to be good enough for a trail truck. This is finally ready for the next stage of cleaning, which for me is gonna be the cheap way. And the cheap way is to use like a foaming glass cleaner and some microfibers. The microfibers are nice, especially when they're different colors because you can just keep looking at them and see how much dirt you're picking up. And then once you start to see it get dark, throw that thing away and grab another microfiber. Um, I found that there was very little still hanging on this paint. There was a little bit here and there, but I'm glad that I went through and we cleaned the entire thing with glass cleaner. Let it evaporate, give it some time to dry and then mask it off and prep it for paint. This is not a paint tutorial. I want to be super, super clear about that. I am not a paint expert. This is a skill that I'm like trying to dive into and learn um, because it's one that I've always been curious about. I do have like a pretty halfway decent background doing like some pretty complicated body modifications and then cleaning it up and painting it. But it's always just been like a panel at a time and a job at a time. I'm really lucky in the fact that I've got really good local paint stores where I could just take a fuel door off of a Euro van that I was flipping and bring it in there and they would scan it with a computer and they could print out paint that matches that 30 year old aged off white paint. And then um, I would pay them extra. They would be able to compress it into rattle cans. And then I would come home. I would do the job with super high quality paint, throw it away with no cleaning, like throw the paint can away with like zero cleaning of a paint gun or any of that. Plus with spray paint, you get the advantage of like way less, way less paint floating around your shop. I've had to mask the crap out of this place. It's still not really masked enough, but in any case, it's all because there's way more oomph and a way bigger fan than coming out of a real paint gun. Now, I chose a more expensive paint gun than I initially was going to for one main reason. Well, a couple main reasons. One, this Harbor Freight gun is only 20 bucks. This is like 400 bucks. This is absolutely capable of giving you a decent paint job if you're willing to invest in decent paint. And if you are a decent painter, I have done a ton of research over the last two months or month and a half, whenever I decided that I was gonna paint this. And what I discovered is if you watch all the different YouTube channels of people using this gun and getting a great paint job out of it, they were all extremely experienced painters. And this is not gonna be as forgiving for a noob like myself, someone who's trying to learn. Plus this isn't as versatile as an expensive gun. So this is 20 bucks, which is great. I seriously, I used to know a lot of people who would flip vehicles that would buy this gun and throw it away at the end of the job. They didn't even clean it because they're just so cheap. This is like 400 bucks. And the reason I invested in a $400 gun 
is that it comes with all these different nozzles. So I could do paint, primer, I could do varnish. There's all this, I could shoot many different types of things right out of the same gun by changing the nozzle. I love that. Plus it has like these caps that you fill with paint and then you just like, it's just, it's an easier system to use for a noob. And because of the extra adjustments that it has, I'm gonna be able to dial in my fan before I get started on the truck. And as someone who is so new to this, I'm gonna get better results out of it. So that's why I decided to go this route instead of the Harbor Freight route. Now in the future, once I get better with this, I might switch it up to the Harbor Freight one. And that's a good way to build your skill set as a whole is to switch your tools up and see if you can, you know, how your skills hold up whenever things change a little bit. So I will be using that on future projects. Today, we are shooting primer. The reason you need primer is for a couple different reasons. The reason that I went with this primer specifically is because I'm so new, I'm gonna be able to build in a certain level of forgiveness by sanding this over and over and over. And even though it drives me crazy at the thought that after I shoot today, I still have to sand this again, we're gonna mix this um, in a way that's gonna make this high build primer. So right now we've scratched everything out to 400 grit, which is pretty smooth, but there's definitely some stuff that I won't be able to see with the naked eye that hasn't been filled with the other coats of primer that we've done so far. So this is gonna help fill any cracks or any uh, scratches, I should say, from 120 that maybe is like underlying that might show up with our top coat or base coat that this could just fill. So we are going to shoot this as a high build. You can actually mix this with reducer and we would be able to shoot this today and spray our top coat over today. But I didn't buy any reducer because I need to, I need to bite the bullet. I need to do this the best way that I can in order to get the best entry level results on a budget. We are shooting single stage paint. It is not near as forgiving. So we need to make sure that the quality of the surface that we're spraying is like as good as possible. So I'm going to mix this up. We're gonna go adjust our gun to get it towards like the best looking pattern that we can. And then I'm just gonna let her rip and see how good we can, uh, how good we can get on this first spray. The first challenge is air quality and air pressure. So I drained any excess water that was in my compressor. I then installed a Home Depot regulator into a Harbor Freight dryer slash filter that I'm gonna use only whenever I'm painting. So I've set it up on the wall to where I can like quickly connect it in and out of my hose reel. I was advised to set the regulator to like 45 and then set it to like 25 to 35 at the gun, depending on how everything's spraying out and how I'm you know, working through getting the right pattern and everything on a piece of paper before I hit the, uh, the Land Cruiser. One thing that I did forget to mention about primer is that one of the goals that we're, we've got here is that we want to make it to where our top coat, like the actual color, has basically the same surface to adhere to throughout the entire paint job. And it's not necessarily because it's gonna stick better or anything like that. It's because we want it to be super consistent. We don't want any weird dark or light spots. We don't want there to be somewhere that the one type of body filler is like kind of soaking in some of the paint and making it look weird. So for that reason, this needs to be a smooth finish that's all one color that we can then apply our top coat on in hopes that it's going to adhere well and that it's gonna adhere evenly and that we're not gonna have like any anything too glaring that's gonna shine through this orange that we're inevitably gonna to get to and spray on here. started having a bunch of issues with the spray pattern coming out of the 3M gun and I could not fix it. Uh, so I just dumped everything into the Harbor Freight gun in a pinch and I started laying it all down. I didn't even dial in the settings and right out of the gate, it sprayed this high build primer way better than the 3M gun. I think that the filter that's in the 3M gun was just, it was too fine to pass this type of material. So now whenever I shoot high build in the future, I'm just gonna reach for the Harbor Freight gun first. And then whenever I need a finer, cleaner pattern uh, for my, my base coat, I'm just gonna go right to the 3M gun for that. Now 
Now I'm gonna cover all the work that we've done with sealer. And we don't actually need that much sealer. I'm just gonna do one like medium to heavy coat. We're gonna let it flash, which means we're just gonna like let it cure up enough that we can cover it with our base coat. Um, that's gonna take like 30 minutes or so. Then we can cover the entire thing in our brand new color. We're gonna paint it orange and we're gonna finally get to see what this is gonna look like long term. There it is, folks. That is a Lexus LX four and a half. All the holes have been filled. All the bodywork is done. It, it's there are some small discrepancies here and there, but for a wheeler, I think this looks really, really nice. So, and there's going to be like some sticker. There's going to be some some off like some black that I'm going to be putting in different places. This is going to look different as we let this paint cure and it gets to a stage where I can start to work with the paint. Um, yeah, I'm excited. There's a few tips that I would love to give any of you who are thinking about painting your own rig. The first one has to do with craftsmanship. Being able to see is gonna give you the best craftsmanship. So before we even start on that, this is the paint code. This is an actual Toyota orange that I chose at the the paint place that I go to, I went to get Toyota mustard yellow. I wanted this to look really classic, but when I saw this orange in a 1990 Toyota paint code catalog, I was like, just, there's no way I, I could, this looks so good. I mean, I had to go with it. And it's just screaming at you when you look at it. It's awesome. As far as craftsmanship, here's a big tip that I would give any of you that are looking to paint your first vehicle. See how nice and glossy and shiny that is? This side was really easy to do because it faced the door. I had the door cracked at least for air circulation. And then there were times that I was opening it all the way up to clear as much air through as possible. And it made it super easy to see if it was hazy. And then that meant that I need to like spray more paint on top of it to get it to like get this nice gloss. Um, it was just easier to figure out what the paint needed because I could see it so much better and I could see the shine. See the shine? Anywhere that doesn't have enough paint's not gonna be shiny like this. Now you can fix it, right? I mean, on the hood, there's a few spots that don't have that shine. God, it's gonna be hard to see in the camera. And so with wet sanding, I can fix that. But the nice thing is I've sprayed this so nice and cleanly, it's so much less work uh, in order to make this paint look right. I do have a run here. And unfortunately, that run is gonna be a pain to fix because this is actually from our sealer that I sprayed over and it ran. And if I would love anybody that's a good painter, let me know, if you have a run like this, is there something you could wipe it off with real quick that would make it easy to blend without having to wait for it to dry? Let me know because I basically, I made the decision to spray over this. Now I'm gonna wet sand this down to where those runs are gone and I'll just have to respray this corner. So one little quick repair here, not a big deal. But this side all in all looks, I mean, I'm so pleased with how it looks for single stage and it being my first truck ever. This side has a discrepancy, but I could not be luckier. <laughs> I mean, so there's a run as you can see right there but this is in the flattest part of the panel. That is the easiest way to repair paint. If it was around an edge, I'd have to be really careful not to burn through, but this, I'll be able to put it on a, like put some thousand grit on a block and just slowly sand and buff that down, wet sand it, and then I'll be able to just buff the whole thing out. So that's gonna be a really easy repair. But what I would like to say to those of you that are trying to paint your first vehicle, get super, super bright lights. Because this side was so much harder to tell what was gloss and what wasn't because I didn't have enough light. And I had, I thought that these lights would be enough. This is, these are lights that I use all the time in here. But in the future, I will buy more lights just so it's gonna be easier for me to like index what needs what. 
there's a trick that interior designers and like interior decorators or you know fashion designers, whatever, use to find complementary colors. And I doubt very many people in the automotive world are aware of this. Although people who paint cars might be aware of this, but your average Joe who just owns a Jeep and has done like lifting tires and stuff doesn't know the easiest way to choose colors. So if you Google color wheel, you're gonna find this little fancy wheel right here. When I bought these wheels from Method, I knew I wanted Method bead grips. When I saw they made this blue, I was like, I'm gonna choose everything around that blue because the blue just looks so good. But there's a bunch of no-nos whenever you're trying to make colors match. If we would have made the vehicle blue, if it was the exact same blue as the wheels, it would have looked okay at best, but it would look very plain and bland. If it's a slightly different shade of blue, it would look like a nightmare. So what we needed to do is use the color wheel and the colors that are right across from dark blue and then even the colors that are right next to that color are gonna be our most complementary colors. So what I decided to do was I was gonna paint it mustard yellow. I like the classic FJ40 mustard yellow that uh, Toyotas have. But when I walked into the paint store and I saw this orange, I was like, dude, this is, I mean, this is literally directly across from dark blue. This is gonna be such a perfect combo because I want something that's really loud. I want something that you're gonna vote for. I'm hoping that you guys are gonna see this and be like, that doesn't look like the same Lexus LX450. And the way that I'm gonna achieve doing that is by using super bright color combos, making this look way different than any other FJ80 that you've seen before. And you can use these same tricks in your own builds. Even if you're painting a bike for your kid and you like some type of lime green, you can use this color wheel to figure out what's right across from lime green. And then if you have a lime green bike, it's probably purple, I would guess, is what you should paint the wheels. It's gonna look like Joker stuff, but it's gonna look awesome because you're using kind of like color science to decide which route to go instead of just trusting your gut and then having something that you're not super happy with. With that long-winded explanation over, it's time to finally get back behind the welder. You know, I do say that I love body work, but it's usually towards the end of a big job like that that I'm ready to just build stuff and not necessarily <laughs> have to do so much sanding and painting. Whoops. These finer details like rebuilding and reshaping the bracket that holds the hood latch system are often overlooked. And this is why when you look at a vehicle and you think it's gonna take like one month of hard work and it actually takes three, it's because of all these little projects. But at the end of the day, these small details are what separate a great build from a good build.
bought a generic 80 series grill off eBay and after a little bit of modification, we were able to get the Lexus emblem to match up nice and tidy up in the front. And then it even has the clearance that I need after trimming like a lower trim piece out of the way to access our free spool, which if you remember in the last video, that's something that I was gonna have to deal with. So this problem virtually solved itself. But I also discovered something that I found very interesting and that is the design of this air box. Right after I bought this Land Cruiser, it was pretty underpowered, so I replaced the dirty air filter, but I didn't take any time to really study this box. But if you look at it, it spins the air almost, a, you know, in the same kind of method that you would want to spin the air in that pre-cleaner that we tested at the beginning of the video. And then it has, after doing a little bit of research, it has this little thing on the bottom that people are calling online a tuna can that just fills up with extra debris and a relief. It's super, super smart. And unfortunately, the top of the snorkel, the snorkel topper that I bought for my Land Rover doesn't have the right size gasket to just put here on the Land Cruiser. And I'm almost out of budget. So I think we might be going over budget because I, 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 I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to order one of these snorkel pre-cleaners. I think that it's a huge benefit. And when you couple it together with the design of this airbox, I think that they're going to become very complementary of each other with keeping our air filter clean on the trail. This next part is something that's super important to me. Today marks four years since I started my YouTube channel and I really wanted to like, I wanted to say thank you to all of you that have been watching me fart around in here over the last four years. And for that reason, we are going to I, I reached out on social media and I asked a bunch of you to send me stickers. And so we are going to make a bunch of you sponsors of this build. I find it really difficult to express to all of you just how grateful I am to have this opportunity. To have this opportunity with Onyx, to have the opportunity to work with Dave, um, to have the opportunity to put your stickers, your brands on a vehicle that I'm building. You know, th this... This is a weird relationship that we have because on my end, I'm just a dude in his garage with a camera. Um, and on your end, you know, you guys are getting to know me. And, and to all of you that have sent these stickers in, to all of you that comment uh, super positively on all these videos, and to all of you that stop me at gas stations just to tell me that you, you love what I'm doing and to keep it up, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It, um, it means the world to me to have you guys involved in this and to have you a part of this community that I'm trying to build. So whether you know it or not, when you watch these videos, when you're checking out my channel and Dave's channel, you're helping us build these vehicles. And uh, thank you so much. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So this is episode two of the build series. Episode three and four, at least, will be on Dave's channel. Maybe episode five, depending on how much time he has over the next three weeks. Yep, I said, uh, I think I'm gonna do three build videos. I've gotta do a cage, sliders, and some rear suspension work. And then you can have this thing back. Hopefully it's like about a month from now. Yeah, roughly a month. It'll come back to my garage, and then we will do episode you know, five or six or whatever until it's done. And I'm gonna end at Overland Expo. You guys can come and see this in person and meet me and whatnot at the Expo um, at the uh, Pacific Northwest Overland Expo in July. And until then, make sure you're voting for Team Dumpster Fire. Yep. Okay, I think that I think that we're showing that this vehicle is worth voting for. This is gonna be rad when it's done. It's gonna be super fun. Dave and I are gonna have a, a blast in it whether we win or not, it doesn't matter. It should be, I mean, it's, it's clearly the winner already. It's, <laughs> it's got a ton of work. That's what I'm talking it's about. It's got the right car to start with. This thing is gonna be awesome. It might not be the biggest, gnarliest build out of all three of them, but I guarantee you this one's gonna hold its own. It's gonna hold its own and I love that it's, I hope that you're watching this thinking, hey, I could afford an 80 series Land Cruiser. Hey, those, that's not that hard to build because that's what we're trying to do is inspire you to build cool stuff. So anyway, make sure that if you want to save money on method bead grip wheels, on rigid lights, on worn winches, all that other stuff, uh, join the Elite Partner Program through Onyx. 
Um, it's a yearly membership. You get the Onyx app, which is outstanding at the elite level, but you also save, you get huge discounts. I think it's like 20% off of it's Warren crazy. or something. It's what, huge what, discounts. The amount of money you save on some of these products is ridiculous. I know shop owners that aren't getting that good of deals. That's, that's exactly right. So uh, make sure you check out the elite part. They, the RCV just joined up and Marlin Crawler and like big names in the industry. And if you want to save 20% off your yearly membership, Use coupon code Dirt Lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you go check out Dave's channel, Dirt Head Shed. Over here. What? Over there. <laughs> All right. I got to get to work. You got to get home. Yes, I do.